You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. One of the really interesting dynamics for Saturday's LSU-Alabama matchup is Brian Kelly and Tommy Reese. Of course, Tommy Reese played under Brian Kelly and then coached under Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly tried to get Tommy Reese to come with him to Baton Rouge, and Tommy Reese decided to stay in South Bend. Only a year later for Tommy Reese to leave South Bend for Alabama. Well, Saturday, Kelly and Reese will meet up in Tuscaloosa. Matt Fortuna spent a lot of years covering Notre Dame football, knows Brian Kelly, Tommy Reese well, now uh, runs his own deal. Uh, it's the Inside Zone, uh, InsideZoneMF.com is in Matt Fortuna. InsideZoneMF.com is the website and also the host of the independent podcast. Get it wherever you get your podcast. Matt's good enough to hang out with us for a few minutes here. Matt, we appreciate it, man. Great to visit again. How are you? Doing well, Matt. Good to talk to you, buddy. How's everything with you? Man, look, it's it's LSU Bama week, so everything <laughs> is just completely on edge, as you'd expect, uh, with so much on the line. I, you know, Matt, I I'm, was excited to talk to you because I'm pretty intrigued by what the Kelly Reese relationship may manifest on Saturday. Let Let's go back if we could and just set set the stage. When Tommy Reese was a player for Brian Kelly, um, what was their relationship like? What do you remember about about that time uh, there in South Bend? You know, it's funny. I, I like to, to say it was like the odd couple that, that couldn't really quit each other, right? I mean, look, Tommy Reese w w was limited in his physical ability as a college quarterback. I think we can all say that without sounding disrespectful, right? I mean, they recruited uh, around him, over him, you name it, and yet he seemed like the only one who could really take Brian Kelly's coaching, and who could give it back to Brian Kelly, uh, just as good as he could take it. And again, it was, it felt like Brian Kelly and that Notre Dame offense needed Tommy Reese more than Tommy Reese needed them at times because they don't go undefeated in the regular season in 2012 without Tommy Reese. They don't win nine games in 2013 uh, after Everett Colson gets kicked out of school mm -hmm. without Tommy Reese sticking it out and not transferring for his senior year. So um, you look at a, a college body of work as an undergraduate, particularly at that time, but really – ran the gamut of the highest of the highs and lowest of lows and everything in between. It's hard to see a more complete career uh, for better and for worse than Tommy Reese had at Notre Dame. Um, when, when Tommy Reese decided to join the staff there under Brian Kelly, what, what was the general feeling about his, his prospects as a coach? You know, he comes from a coaching family, right? His father, Bill Reese, uh, worked at UCLA, Northwestern, the Bucks, the Bears, the Niners, all over the place. So uh, even when he was a player, um, he was like a coach on the field. And I know that's a cliche, but even in interviews with us, there was a lot of coach speak. Um, he was a guy who, again, you know, di didn't have, you know, wasn't the most physically imposing guy, certainly wasn't a, a mobile quarterback. Um, but you know what? He was one of the least sack quarterbacks in the country his senior year. Uh, he had great rapport with that offensive line. He lived with, with, with all the offensive linemen and the captains. He was a guy that everyone in that locker room wanted to go to battle for week in and week out. And so it had all the, the makings and characteristics uh, of a coach. I think he had a, a cup of coffee in camp with, uh, they were called the Redskins then, the Washington football right. team, uh, and, and, you know, quickly uh, got on staff. I think first it was with Northwestern and then with the Chargers, or maybe it was the other way around before eventually coming back to Notre Dame. I remember when they hired him, it was in 2017. It was right after the 4-8 and eight disaster of 2016. And it was as quarterback's coach, but it was also before the 10th assistant coach had been approved. So that first year, he was on-field coach, but couldn't recruit, and, and eventually was activated in 2018 as a quarterback coach. And again, uh, I, I vi vividly remember his last game, uh, the pinstripe bowl against Rutgers, ugly game. Notre Dame wins it, though, pretty convincingly. And Brian Kelly, in his last press conference of that year, says, you know, whenever Tommy Reese becomes coach, Reese will have a spot on the staff working for me. And that's how highly I think of him. Mm. That's, um, man, that is high praise. Um, and these two have a, a long history. So when, when Brian Kelly left Notre Dame for, for LSU and Tommy Reese didn't follow him, uh, were, were you surprised that, that he didn't, that they didn't stay joined? Uh, yes and no. In real time, it was going back and forth. I mean, I was getting information uh, from all over. And there was a point in time, 
you know, I think as late as that day where he decided to stay in Notre Dame, where it looked like he was going to LSU. People close to Tommy were telling me he sounds like a guy who's leaving. I know he thought long and hard about it. And frankly, Notre Dame, I think, uh, waited till the last second to really up their offer, so to speak. Not that it was a money decision, but, you know, LSU was offering him a nice chunk of change, and you need to feel wanted and respected and validated uh, at your current place of employment and, you know, at your alma mater, right? I mean, that, that's another dynamic for this thing as well. And, and, and look, in real time, it did not sound like Notre Dame was going to hire Marcus Freeman unless they were able to, to stabilize the staff around him, so to speak. That meant Tommy Reese staying as offense coordinator. That meant Matt Bayless staying as uh, the head strength coach. Uh, so, you know, if Tommy Reese leaves for LSU, it's interesting to think about the alternate history of what happens that Notre Dame coaching search. I'm not saying Marcus Freeman doesn't get it, but it certainly opens it up to a more of a, a traditional national search. Mm. Uh, but, but ultimately, you know, Tommy Reese needed to feel a little bit of love from his alma mater. He did. He chose to stay. And, uh, from my understanding, it was not a pleasant conversation uh, when he told Brian Kelly that uh, he was not going to be joining him. It's interesting. We're, we're showing the video right now of when Tommy Reese announced to the Notre Dame team that he was staying. <laughs> um, and then a year later, he leaves for Alabama. Matt Fortuna is with us on Twitter at Matt underscore Fortuna, the Inside Zone, uh, the independent podcast as well, wherever you get your podcast. So whenever he made the decision to leave a year later, Take us there, Matt, the, the decision and the reaction then. It's a little bit different, right? I think, look, he is a guy who played and coached for Brian Kelly pretty much his whole college football career, right? And so I think the opportunity to stay at his alma mater and essentially be the, the quote-unquote head coach of offense, right? You know, working for a defensive head coach and Marcus Freeman. I think that was appealing to him to kind of put his own stamp on that offense. Obviously, things didn't go as planned last year. His starter, Tyler Buckner, gets lost for the season two games in. Um, you know, they do what they can with Drew Pine, but it was kind of a slog offensively last year. And again, there's always been this kind of love hate relationship that, that's almost like familial, right? When it's your own school and your own guy between Tommy Reese and the nerding fan base. I mean, this is a guy who, when he relieved Everett Golson late in a game against Purdue in 2012, got booed and he ended up leading them to a game winning drive uh, in the <laughs> second game of the year of a year. They end up going undefeated yeah. in the regular season. So, um, you know, he became the convenient punching bag for the offensive shortcomings last year. I think a lot more to do with not going in the transfer portal to get a quarterback than it was for the actual product on the field. But uh, look, Nick Saban's Nick Saban, right? And may, some people may argue he's lost a step that Alabama isn't what they were a couple of years ago. He's still the greatest coach probably of all time. If you've got a chance to, to work for him, you've got to take it, whether you're his first choice or not. And, and I think that may have been something that, that you know, uh, the light bulb went on, I think, in Notre Dame fan bases heads of, you know what, like, if Nick Saban wanted this guy, clearly there's something special about him, right? Like, like the, the Nick Saban's not making charity hires here. Uh, and, and certainly he's got a great offensive mind. And certainly, frankly, he's had his work cut out for him this year uh, with, with Alabama on that side of the ball. Matt Fortuna is our guest. Spent a lot of years covering uh, Notre Dame. Great uh, understanding of Brian Kelly, Tommy Reese, that whole dynamic there. Now uh, does his own thing, the Inside Zone. Make sure uh, you get to the website, InsideZoneMF.com, as in Matt Fortuna. InsideZoneMF.com, and check out his stuff at the Independent Podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Um, all right, Matt, let's talk about Saturday and how that whole you know four- or five-minute preamble of their relationship <laughs> un unfolds. You know, I'm always curious when there's sort of deep knowledge between two coaches who it benefits in this instance, do you think there's any benefit to Brian Kelly knowing that for as long as Tommy Reese has been a coach, he's basically been a Brian Kelly and player? He's been a Brian Kelly disciple, pupil? There, there might be. Um, I, I wouldn't read too much into it there just because the personnel at Alabama is so different from what uh, he had at, at Notre Dame. And when you look at how much that offensive line, frankly, has struggled at Alabama this year and, and how much that was kind of the backbone of Notre Dame's better offenses when Tommy Reese was there, both as a player and as a coach. I I'm not sure how much of an advantage that really w would give you. I mean, conversely, you could you could look at, you know, Mike Dembrock w was a uh, play caller in the OC uh, when, when Tommy Reese was a player, uh, or excuse me, as an assistant coach at Notre Dame as well. So, I mean, look, there's a lot of familiarity on both sides when, when it comes to this. So it's hard to say one guy has an advantage over the other. And, and look, it, it, there's one thing you probably learned by now with Brian Kelly uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of friends, but he doesn't have a whole lot of enemies either, right? He, he's kind of one of those rare coaches who's been a head coach uh, for pretty much his whole career. He doesn't have much of a coaching tree, so to speak. He doesn't have a whole lot of friends in the business. Everything with him is very business 
transactional, professional. And for that reason alone, it's my understanding, I don't think there's any like bad blood or anything between him and Tommy Reese. And, you know, he had some nice comments to say about him uh, over the summer when he got hired at Alabama. And it's going to be interesting and fun to see, right? I mean, the, this rivalry's got enough juice as it is, particularly after last year, uh, to see, you know, you know protege and, 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 um, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the teacher could go at it. Uh, with, with all the stakes that this game has on Saturday night, it's going to be pretty interesting. Matt, when when you I don't know how much you've gotten to see Alabama play this year, but when uh, when you watch this Alabama offense, what does strike you about the job Tommy Reese has done from game one now through game eight? Yeah, you know, funny enough, I was there for week two against Texas, so I, I'm all in one in person with them. This <laughs> oh wait, year. please, are you going and, this weekend? I'll, I'll buy the plane I, not, ticket. No. You, I'll yeah, buy hey, you the plane you're, ticket. If you're paying, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> the, we'll, get, uh, we'll get our info off it, air. <laughs> it, it was a slog, at least that game, right? And you're watching that game, and look, that was a quarterback battle that went in really into the first game of the season. You're watching Jalen Milrow struggle, and in real time, you're thinking. Tyler Buckner can't beat this guy out, right? And then we see the next week at USF, and you're thinking, oh, boy, like they might have a real problem on their hands here. But slowly but surely, you know, things have steadied out there. Um, you know, they, they've still got a lot of good skill position players. The offensive line there has certainly been the, the, the biggest disappointment when you look at that that offense. And it really hampers your, your, hampers your ability to do a lot of things now. Again, the receivers, I think, are pretty good. They're not at that elite level of two, three years ago when Alabama was playing and, and winning national championships, but they're still a good group of receivers, and they're going up against the secondary, as you know, that has really struggled uh, against the pass so far this season. So um, it, it should be a very exciting matchup because I think you're looking at two really contrasting styles of play here. A couple more for you here, Matt. Matt Fortuna is our guest, uh, InsideZoneMF.com, and check out the independent podcast, however you get your podcast. National college football perspective uh, with our buddy Matt Fortuna, who we had a, a great chance to meet at uh, at SEC Football Media Days this summer in uh, in Nashville. Uh, Matt, when you when you look at this game, mentioning that you had been in Tuscaloosa for the Texas game, you've seen both these teams play. Where do you see the the key match matchup, the, the pendulum swinging one way or another Saturday? I think it comes down to one guy, Jaden Daniels. I mean, he he's number three right now in the Heisman odds at plus four fifty. And I think he's either going to win it or lose it Saturday. If he goes into Alabama and beats them on the road and beats them, beats uh, they probably tell you, beats Nick Saban for the second year in a row, I think he's all but locked up the trophy. I really do. There are other you know good candidates out there who are going to have chance chances to make statements down the stretch. But when you look at the overall body of work, when you look at what this guy's been able to do, again, it's not his fault that they couldn't stop Florida State or Ole Miss in the second half. Uh, this guy's been everything and then some offensively. I mean, he's number three nationally. Uh, in passing yards per game at 321 yards. You know, he's got Malik Neighbors, arguably the best receiver in the country, catching passes for him. I, I just think Jaden Daniels is the ultimate X factor here because he's the better quarterback in this game, no question about it. And if he plays his best game, LSU goes in there with a great chance to pull off, I guess, what would be technically a minor upset, but, you know, a pretty monumental win in the grand scheme of things when you look at the idea of possibly beating Nick Saban in back to back years. So I, I think it all comes down to him. Matt, last thing for you, as a guy who covered Brian Kelly all those years in South Bend, I'm curious just your thoughts on, on with the first, what, what's it been, 14 and 8, what, 22 games of his LSU career, uh, What how it's all transpired with Brian Kelly and Baton Rouge so far? It, it's gone about how I thought it would. I mean, the, the guy's really good at what he does. I mean, it, he's unconventional. He may fake an accent. He may be a fish out of water in certain places. <laughs> but, like, the guy's won big everywhere he's been. He won his 300th career game last time out. He's been around the block. He knows what he's doing. Uh, the one knock on him at Notre Dame was he couldn't break through and win a national championship. And, uh, you know, could he? I, I definitely think he could win it, win one at all. So I think he, he's good enough and he's got the program and the talent around him capable enough to eventually win one. The question is, will he win one? Because that's ultimately, I think, what he's going to be judged by down in Baton Rouge, but it's gone, I think, in the short term, a little bit better than I thought it would be. Again, I thought it would be good. I didn't have him beating Nick Saban and playing in the SEC title game in year one, and I think, you know, anytime you do that, you earn yourself a lot of goodwill, but as you know, if they get routed this Saturday, it's back to square one, and everyone's questioning whether this is our guy or not, because that's how it works down there, and, and understandably so, but so far, um, it, you know, what, what, while there's been a loss or two that will leave you scratching your head, um, I think the overall body work certainly is, is trending in a positive direction. For him. You know the culture well. 
Uh, <laughs> Matt Fortuna is our guest on Twitter at Matt underscore Fortuna. Make sure you check out InsideZoneMF.com, InsideZoneMF.com, and uh, the independent podcast, however you get your podcast. Great uh, National College Football Voice. Matt, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for some time today. Thanks, Matt. Anytime. And I'll be down there if you got a play ticket for me. Hey, uh, I, I might swing it. I mean, can you get credentialed before Saturday? I think they let me in once. They'll do it twice, right? <laughs> fair, fair enough, dude. I'll, look, man, I'll take any advantage I can get. And if it means having you and Brian Denny Stadium for uh, for a few hours and foot uh, the bill for that ticket, I might do it. Uh, we appreciate it, Matt. Thanks, man. Take it easy, buddy. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.